alert. Calling all customers of Mr. Red's Goblin Guides. If you have used a little green goblin to navigate a mysterious dungeon, you may be entitled to compensation. After multiple reports of a missing coin purse, monsters hatching from speckled eggs, and killer pots and pans undisclosed by your local goblin guide, a class action lawsuit pursued by Dwarven Stone Firm and Associates is being filed against Mr. Red's Goblin Guides. Direct your sending spells to our offices or write your name under the address uh, in the shields of the yawning portal. It's time to get what you deserve. Called now. Hi, and welcome to Lazy Tap Room. Tonight, we're going to be imbibing <laughs> upon the sleep immunity drink. You'll find the notes of caffeine within it to really perk you up while the harder drinks inside still drive a good bite. I'm David Williams, the current resident DM. Welcome to Lazy Bardcast. <laughs> My name is Kyle. I'm playing Talgroff, the mountain shield. Maybe he's an elf. Maybe he's a dwarf. I'm not really sure anymore. My name is Josh Yarnell. I'm playing Orion Goodbarrel, a halfling bard in search of the greatest adventure. I'm Kyle Dell. I'm playing Gideon the Human Artificer and a man at a time. Hi, my name is Sean Luc Jacques, and I'm playing Maven the Monolith Smolderbeard, the most electrified man of the sea. If you like what you hear, be sure to look us up at the Lazy Bardcast where things are found. Previously on the Lazy Bardcast. <laughs> you started off by Orion, a few eggs that you had on your person hatched, and out from them came some carrion crawlers covered in purple spots. Some spores came out that affected many of you, and Orion, you were left fighting these creatures by yourself until an invisible figure appeared who you eventually discovered was a drow. When you continued forward, you all encountered a large roper on the ceiling, as well as two animated ballista. Uh, Ryan, you almost went down. The drow mage again saved your life and said that you owe him again. All of you eventually, by Gideon thunderclapping the thing off the ceiling, I believe. Something separating like that. His Thunder Velcro. wave. Yeah, removing Velcro. the Velcro from the ceiling. <laughs> and Talgroff turning one of the ballista to just shoot the other ballista seemed to work fairly well. You all dispatched of these figures. You were confronted by the drow who did not introduce himself, but said that he had a potential offer for all of you, which you turned down. Heading into the large double doors with the dwarves on either side, you opened it up and inside you saw four skeletal dragons all suspended from the ceiling in some way. Along with those dragons, you also saw along the walls a number of tentacles flapping out from the walls and hitting the floor, extending maybe a couple feet from each wall. But you're all standing in this doorway now, looking inside of this room where there are all of these dragons. And now, as the battle dies down, your adrenaline dies down, you can see inside that these are just dragons held together by wire and hanging from the ceiling like a museum piece. All right, so you're all standing in the doorway looking into this room with these skeletal dragons. And as you get a better look into this room, you can see that there is a fifth, much larger dragon in a small alcove to the southern end of this room. The walls with all of the tentacles appear to have old dwarven carvings, hieroglyphs, uh, depicting the same nature that was on the door as you were heading in here, mine carts and mining ore, but many of the dwarves' arms have been removed from the carvings, their heads have been smashed off, and in their place are these tentacles writhing out of the walls. Whoa. This is a defiled place. Not sure I feel comfortable stepping in here after fighting that vast battle. How's everyone looking there? I can't really breathe. My ribs hurt, but I'm breathing. I mean, I've been patched up, but I'm not doing too good. I'm still myself, but uh, I'm a little tired. Those things in there, those dragons, they don't look very real, but I still don't trust it. I mean, hell, Pan's tried to kill us. I mean, maybe one or two of us is looking all right, but it seems like... It would be pretty good if we were all doing well, so if you wouldn't mind, it might be good at least for the little one and myself to take a rest for a moment. Not a bad idea. Maybe during that we ask the little fella you got there, Maven, a little bit more about this room here. You guys want to go back into that other room and rest up a bit? I would like to. Yeah, maybe like around the ballista and, and we can use it in case something else shows up. That sounds perfect. We also didn't really settle uh, the idea about going back and... Talking to that other dwarf or figuring that thing out. All right, well, let's go back and we'll chat about it, yeah? All right, so you guys are going to head back into the room with the catapults and where you fought the roper, or do you want to go further back? 
You remember further back was the room with it was the, the kitchen pots? area yeah. with the pots, and then it went through a small sure. laboratory. Let's go to the pots. Do we want to go in the kitchen and make up some food? I mean, that's not a bad idea either. We got a big egg to cook. <laughs> Do we? It's in your bag. Oh yeah, because you never pulled it out. It might be best if we leave it in the bag for a little bit longer. I mean, we've got two options. We either have a ballista that can defend us by itself, or we go to the kitchen and maybe get pummeled by pans and pots and things. Well, I think we already took care of that. Why don't we take the ballista kind of back where we can guard it, make sure nothing comes up and tries to turn it on us, you know, take watch or whatever. All right, well, you take the lead with that thing. I'll be behind it. <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> All right, so you guys start pushing the ballista down the hallway, make it to the small kitchen area, Tallgraf. You have the ballista. Looking inside the kitchen area, you don't see any additional pots or pans that are moving around. You still see the corpse of the small goblin as well as the number of shattered pots lying on the ground. Yeah, before I go to sleep, can I just... Can I fire this a couple times? Yeah, I'm not really sure how it fires. It just sort of goes off. (laughs) Goes off. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just going to take a couple shots and then I'll hit the hay. The stone. So we want to take a nice full night's rest? Yeah. Might as well. All right, so you place the ballista behind you. All of you start bedding down inside of the kitchen area. Who's taking first watch? I'll take it. Uh, Make a perception check. 26. In the middle of your rest, Maven, you hear the creaking sound of wagon wheels on the stone ground. Cool. Um, I don't know what that is. I'm going to buy the Holy Avenger and hold it above you forever. No. You hear from the hallway with the ballista the sound of the small cart being drug along the ground, and it shows up in the doorway. He appears to have uh, timed his approach well enough that he wouldn't get shot by the ballista. And there you see a small wooden figure with his cart. He bangs on the side of it. A sign falls down that says Trillers, and the three large bowls appear. Inside of the bowls, however, are very different items than yeah, the last cool. time you saw them. <laughs> Come on, give me the cloak of billowing. Let's hear in. the cloak of billowing. From the first bowl, you see one. a hand begin to float out of the bowl. It's this withered, decrepit hand, and the small sign that flips down in front of it says Hand of Vecna. Oh, snap. <laughs> and the price on it is 300,000 gold pieces. In the center, uh-huh. you see a shield made of iron, the shield of Farragul. Oh my god, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Maven, you recognize the shield. You watched the shield being forged in a oh. vision that you had. Whoa. You see the slot on top of it where there was a slot for what looked like your greatsword to fit into, and on the face of it is cord symbol, the iron fist with a lightning bolt running through it. And it says, Shield of Cord. And the price that flips down is 10 gold pieces. Okay. Third, you see... It looks like one of those, uh, like the fold-out fans okay. appears okay. in the last in the last one. Yeah, and uh, underneath it, it says "Feather Token Fan," and the price for that is ten gold pieces. Oh, the best yeah. item in Super Smash Brothers. I'm gonna go up to him. I'm like, hey, Triller, how you doing? Triller is kind of sitting on the side of his carts with all of his roots hanging off. He just lifts up one little root hand and gives a wave. I'm gonna point to the big tentacle thing on the ground. Like, can you believe this? And then <laughs> he, kind of like, he kind of looks over at it, and gives you a nod. They're like, all right, what you got? What you got? <laughs> You got a hand? That's kind of weird. I want that. I might want that, too. I'll take the shield first. Ten gold. Why is it ten gold? Ten gold. He just motions to the shield. Sure. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> I'll put ten gold in the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. You put ten gold in. and In my mind, it's like the the things where you put them in the slots and then you slide it forward yeah, in the arcade. Yeah, exactly. Dude, totally. Okay. That's exactly what it Sweet. is. Yeah, you put, you put the money in the bowl, you slide it in. It kind of makes a few chunking sounds. And then you can grab the shield if you want. I'll grab the shield. Yeah. You immediately understand its properties, as is the way of Triller's cart. This is a shield of cord. Uh, This shield is designed to be fit with the spawn of Kelmar, and together they turn into special weapons. And, uh, yeah, you understand that if you put your blade into this shield, it would transform into a set of weapons instead of your singular great sword. Wow. Okay. What does the fan do? The fan of the feather token, its properties are, it's a one-time use item. You can use it like a fan, and it'll blow an enormous gust of wind, big enough to speed up boats, to do all sorts of creative things, whatever you can think of with it. I will happily give him the 20 gold. Sure. Yeah, so you put in another 10, chunk it in, and you take the feather token. 
I'll uh, tip my hat and I'll say, I got to get back to watch, but uh, I'll let other people know you have a hand for sale. Gives you a wave I'll goodbye. Wave back to him and then. Comes back and we're all dead. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. I didn't know Maven wore a hat. So, Maven, as you purchase the shield and the um, feather token, the fan token, two additional items appear. You see where the shield was a small bundle of leaves, like small ground up, and what looks like steaming leaves appears, almost like a cooked moss of some kind. And next to that, you see a large black orb with like a smoky interior next to that as well. In front of the leaves, you see manga leaves. They're a healing root. And when you eat them, you restore one HP, and that's on there for one gold. The other thing is called the Talisman of the Sphere. And that is for 50 GP, and it helps in controlling spheres of annihilation. I don't know what that <laughs> means. <laughs> Sounds cool. Maven, as he was walking away, was like, damn it, Triller. All right, yeah, give, give me both of those two. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you put down 50 gold <laughs> yeah. pieces and 51. you get, you get 51. both of those. And two additional items appear. You see in the middle a vial of what looks like a deep red liquid. It is assassin's blood. It is a poison that when ingested or consumed in some way requires a constitution saving throw or it takes damage and is poisoned for 24 hours. That's 15 gold. And next to that is what looks like a dark silver plated armor. And that is armor of necrotic resistance which it's plate armor that gives you resistance to necrotic damage and that is 300 gold. That's nothing. That's full plate? Well it's plate. Whatever the... Is that I'm surprised 17? it's not like 3,000. Yeah, 17 AC? I don't have my player's hand. Plate no. armor is 18 AC. 18. Triller. Does Triller have any like facial expressions while I'm like looking at these? Or is yeah, I like... am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> so Triller looking at him, he's literally a log. He has various facial features that include small branches, small leaves, little berries growing off of him. He's literally just a stump with roots. And he does make facial expressions and things though. I'll take the armor, Triller. You put down 300 gold pieces, push it in. Uh, you take the armor off of the rack. It's heavy even for you. And no additional things appear. <laughs> okay. I'll see you later, Triller. Gives you a nod and a wave. I just walk slowly with all this stuff like <laughs> <laughs> drop the orb. I'm like, damn it. And like <laughs> trying to slowly pick it up so I only have to take one trip. Sure. I'm going to wake up tall grass by uh, dropping the plate armor in front of him. Probably all of you kind of stir awake for a minute and look over oh. at the clatter. It's the sound of clattering armor on the ground. Put this on. You'll look prettier. Where'd you get that? Triller's over there. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'll take your armor. I just got you're welcome. Telegraph will quickly uh, get up from uh, his sleeping mat and like run around the corner to see if Triller is still there. Telegraph, you hurry over to Triller, who is sitting on top of his wagon in the next room. In the bowls, you see no sword. You see only what remains, which is a small green vial of blood and a hand that is decaying and seems to have some sort of frost essence to it. Uh, small shards of ice hanging off the edges of the hand. Oi, oi there, um, uh, Stumpy. Triller, Triller. Um, he, he lifts up a root and waves at you. Listen, I know the last time I didn't have enough gold for, the, for that sword that you showed me. I don't see it here, but I really need it. He, he looks at you while you're talking, and he lifts up a hand and motions to the cart, and then just shrugs. Do you have the sword or not? I just really need to... He kind of scratches on his head and then gives a nod, yes. Well, I, I could give you this this heart here. It's it's definitely magical. He kind of looks around, looks at his cart, points at it, and then shakes his stump no. I, is there like a, like something we can kill for you that, that we could get to that? And he kind of scratches his chin and puts up his hands and shrugs. Uh, is this just like a rotation of things <laughs> and it's always like shrug, <laughs> nod, shake head. It's a soundboard. All right. Um, Telegraph will kind of saunter back to uh, <laughs> his his cot and sort of sit down absentmindedly, not really noticing the armor. Why do you want that sword so bad? What? Uh, uh, um, no raisin. What the? What was that? I don't know how to say this, but it sort of spoke to me. Not like in a creepy, necrotic way, but like, you know, when you just know it's the right weapon for you. Join us. Yeah, I get that. And then he'll, like, turn over to get more comfortable to lay down and show his shield now to Tallgriff. Wow, Maven, that uh, 
That shield's pretty awesome. Oh, this, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty. I'm looking forward to using it. You know what else is pretty nice? That armor that I got for you that I feel like I shouldn't have because it sounds oh, like you don't oh, really oh, like oh, it yeah. that much. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm Maybe just, Orion will wear some plate, I, run know, around, and probably <laughs> wouldn't be able to move very well, but at least he wouldn't die. I, I really don't think he's going to be able to wear <laughs> Not strong enough to wear <laughs> <laughs> It does require 15 strength. Okay, you know. At the very least, it looks badass. You got to admit that. I, I'll, I'll put it on. Yeah, at first, when you put it on, it's pretty big and uncomfortable for you to wear, but as you attune to it, it begins to shrink and form fit to your body better, and you do look really cool. This, like, kind of chainmail undertone with this dark silver armor over the top of it, this plate mail. But this, uh, this armor looks great, feels I great. I know that, I know. That's why I got it for you. Uh, thank you, Maven. One dwarf to another, won't forget this. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go and make sure nothing kills us now. <laughs> that's, good. that's a good idea, you go do that. Tokarov, you take your watch, it passes uneventfully. Who do you wake up next? I wake up Gideon, the man. Gideon, you awake? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm awake. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. And standing outside the doorway back into the room where you encountered the roper, you can still hear the faint explosions going off from the catapult, just rumbling along. And you also see a small wooden figure sitting on a cart. Hey there, fella. Um, who are you? He, he looks at you and then points at the sign. And kind of smacks it a little bit. What you got there? I'll look at the hand, and I'm going to... I don't want to touch it at first, just from its sheer aura. <laughs> it's, sure. It's a very eerie vibe. And I'll look over at a trailer, and I'm like, I've got a bad feeling about that one. Well, have a good day. He gives a nod and a small wave. I want to take a look at the ballista and just kind of inspect it a little bit, see if I can see any, like, markings, sure. anything that's giving the enchantments. Yeah, make an arcana check. 15. Looking over it, it's easy enough to see that this is definitely magically imbued. There's a number of runes across it, and based off of the runes that are on it, you imagine it's some sort of modified firebolt spell that is just endlessly happening on this ballista. Can I get a little etching of it? Like a paper and, yeah. and etch the runes? Yeah, totally. So I can take a little note of it? Yeah. Do that. And then I'm also going to go back to the room and take Artie, and I'm going to go through his bag and I'm going to pull out a ring that I have. Uh, Artsy, I think it's time that uh, you, you take a rest yourself. And I'm going to put the ring on and I'm going to have Artie go in my bag of holding. Okay. And just swap that out and then just take some time to swap some spells. Perfect. Yeah, easy enough. Easy enough. And last Orion, as you're woken up by Gideon after his watch, you see the familiar face of Triller in the other room. Trilla, And buddy. the same items we've been over now. Whoa, can I play with this? I pick up the hand of Vecna. <laughs> he nods. You pick it up, and <laughs> you hear the whisperings of what sounds you imagine to be demonic, infernal, something horrific, whispering in your mind. You're unsure of it's what it's saying, but as you're holding it, you start to hear and understand the whisperings that are being told, and it's just Ooh. kill, kill. And looking, even looking at Triller, you kind of get like a urge to kill him. And then you look at your hand, and you know the only way to utilize this item properly would be to remove a hand. Whoa. And then that concentration is broken as the hand levitates back towards the cart. Because you cannot use it unless you pay the price. Well, I can't afford that, although that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, oh, Triller, I have a good idea. When my friends wake up, can I use it uh, to like play a trick on them? He kind of like silently laughs and then <sighs> sighs and shakes his head. No. All right. We'll see you next time, Triller. I'll walk away. I'll kick some rocks. <laughs> as you walk away, you hear the sound of retreating wagon wheels as Triller packs up his cart and begins walking away. Bye, Triller. Watch out for the ballista. He gives a wave as he ducks down. As you hear... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just going to go and, you know, do some, uh, some cleaning up the dust and blood and stuff all over my loot. <laughs> Sure. For the rest of my watch. Uh, Ryan, have you done any further writing in your journal since you came down here? Dear diary, today was so uh, hard. I died twice. <laughs> I just have the uh, the songs that I'm kind of compiling as I go throughout okay. the dungeon. Okay, so you have been writing down songs and things like that? Yes. And do you have a title for this book? Have you titled what your writings are yet? Not yet. Memoirs okay. of Leading a Girl. Not yet. There and Back Again, is that taken? You open up the it's book taken. and one page just says, kill, kill. You, uh, you do crazy. open up your book, and <laughs> it looks like it's been tampered with. 
It's your Whoa. sister. It looks like you can see the imprint of writing, like someone has placed a page on top of your pages and began writing. And I'm going to have it, to get a copyright It literally right looks lawyer. like someone has placed a paper on top and then traced every word you've written in this book. Well, we're going to have a really uncomfortable breakfast. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> and uh, at the end of your watch, feeling a little disgruntled, Orion, uh, it's time to wake everybody up. Who wrote in my book? What the hell? Someone touched my book. Are you even old enough to read? What do you? What book? This one. I've never even seen that before. I'm just like making etchings on my ring. <laughs> I put songs in here. I I write down my thoughts and feelings. It's my book. You caught me. I've been dying to know what you've been thinking and feeling this entire time. Well, just ask, Maven. That's not <laughs> fair. <laughs> But on the bright side, I bought everyone goodies. Uh, Gideon, this one's for you, and I throw you the Dark Sphere thing. I don't know what a thingy of Annihilation is, but it sounds terrible, and I'm sure you'd like that. Orion, here's your new fan. It only works once. Don't, like, cool off your food with it or something. <laughs> a bowl of soup. I was, I was getting ready to try it out the second it touched my hands, and I freeze. All right. I'll save it for when the time comes. All right, but you guys all get in your long rest. You're feeling close to more powerful. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. Uh, Orion, do you write in your book at all throughout the night? Yeah, I'll write kill a whole bunch of times. I'll write all the whispers I heard down. As cause. you're writing it, you watch as that imprint forms around each word that you write. Whoa. It's like something is tracing it with a slow delay. Like as you're writing you watch those imprints form behind your writing before it catches up with you hey guys check this out look when i when i write in my book something fun happens now orion what do you write in your book to show all of them i write uh look what happens in my book something fun happens <laughs> why now. did you write kill a bunch of times <laughs> oh uh, i was playing with the hand that triller had and i, I don't know <laughs> so i just did <laughs> <laughs> so you come in here and wake us all up and tell us that we messed with your book and now something weird's happening with it? Get your story straight. Do you think they're connected? Did you? <laughs> did I have no you idea what you're talking about. <laughs> we got bigger problems than that. All right, problem over here for another you're day. You nearly died again. And you're thinking, oh, someone's going through my book. Well, I write a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a little more than writings and songs, mate. All right, well, if I catch anyone singing the songs that I wrote in this book, I'm going to be real upset, you guys. I'll try to contain myself. All right, so you guys finish packing up all of your resting materials, your various sleep sacks and everything that you have, and you're ready to head out for the rest of the day. Were you looking to head back towards Yek and the Silver Flame Dwarf, or were you heading further down past the, um, the large statues of dragons? So here's my plan. If we go back for the dwarf, we can just grab him, break the chain, and lead him back here, and then just point the ballista at the wall and just keep shooting. And if they come through, we can just take them one at a time and make a choke point at the door. So we should just walk in there yeah. in front of everyone. Yeah, there's just a few bugbears. Excuse me for asking, but I don't think that we've got to this part. What relationship do you have with this other dwarf, other than that he's another dwarf? From what I can tell, he's part of my clan. So... He'll definitely know things. Certainly he'll help in this quest of mine. Obviously he's chained up, so he doesn't have a whole lot of options. If he's chained up, he probably knows something. I mean, why would they chain him up for no reason? Regardless, we can't really trust that many people in here, and just another dwarf part of your clan would be nice to have in our group. Yeah, you're right. Have you noticed, everyone wants us to do him a favor, but I also think those same people want to put a knife in our back as soon as we're done with them. That's true. Do you want to put a knife in our back? What? I just thought I'd ask. I'm just going to look at the rest of my group. I hide the page that was kill, 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 <laughs> kill, 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 kill in my journal away from you guys. I'd never, no, never. So if we get in there like real sneaky, I could probably help like free the dwarf if that's how we want to play it. You know what's way easier and typically more fun is loud and fast over sneaky. I'll follow you. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Um, loud and fast got rid of an arm and a leg for me. It's worked for me so far. I could regrow limbs, though, if I try hard enough. I don't believe you. You're a dwarf. Dwarfs can't do that. <laughs> Cleric's hand. So as you guys are talking, Maven, you set the shield down on the ground, and you take the greatsword and 
kind of jam it down to the small spot and you watch as it, the sword begins to glow like red hot and the whole shield does as well before a bolt of lightning strikes out from it and scatters across the ground, a loud thunderous boom like echoes throughout the tunnels and the sword breaks off at the point that it's in the shield into what looks like a perfect um, long sword. And the shield now reinforced by the spawn of Kelmar. But the shield grants you resistance to lightning damage and the sword is a long sword, um, and the sword deals thunder damage instead of slashing damage. Ooh, that's cool. Well, we got the loud part down. Now it's time for the fast part. Lead on. Uh, let's go. All right, fine. Um, let's just do it then, I guess. Yeah. My shoe's untied. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, awesome. Keep up, lad. <laughs> you, you guys make your way back in the direction that uh, you had encountered Yek and the bugbears, the large goblin market. You make your way through the small laboratory, and you can see lying on the ground, bloodied and beaten, is a dwarf, a familiar dwarf that you had all seen. You can see one of his eyes, his right eye is big and swollen, like blood dripping from his eye. Beyond that, he's just covered in what looks like whip marks across his chest, across his back. It looks like he's been thrown here. Is there any discarded. people manning a market? Uh, this is before you get to the market area. Got it. Is he dead or just jacked up? Uh, make a medicine check. And he's by himself discarded He's by himself here? just thrown on the floor in here. Seven. You go over to him. It's hard to find a pulse. He feels cold. I will You're a little unsure. Attempt spare the dying. Yeah, you cast spare the dying. It finds a target that was already stabilized, but just barely hanging on at this point. You can't hear the bustling of the market in this room, which you were able to beforehand. Talgroff is going to kneel That's down weird. That's over weird. this dwarf, and he's going to uh, lay on hands and okay. restore his health. You cast lay on hands on this dwarf, and you watch as a number of whip marks on his chest and on his back begin to seal up. Uh, how much do you want to expend? 20. And this dwarf, he, he breathes in and looks up at you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. You can see his eye is still like swollen really thick, like almost swollen shut at this point as he's looking around. A little bit of silver flickers in his left eye. As he wakes out, gesture and just, shh. There's only two reasons why a room like this is empty when it was quite bustling before. This could very well be a trap or we are very lucky. So this whole fast part, we might want to get a move on with it and do the pleasantries later. Who 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 are who are all of you? Yeah, yeah. Shut it for a second. We're gonna oh, talk here. Wh where am I? <laughs> the name's Talgroff. I say you're part of the Silver Flame. Do you know me? What what is Silver Flame? Where are we? Who who are all of you? You and I spoke like yesterday, real briefly. Do you remember that? He kind of looks around the room, and I don't remember anything. Come on, man, shake out of it. You got to remember uh, something. Do his eyes uh, maybe symbolize what happened to other people's eyes when they got the worms in them? Yes. Very oh, closely. no. I'm going to back everyone up and like uh, go in front of them and just put my arms back and I'm going to forcibly make them st take a step back. Everyone, what, you, what are you doing? We're talking here. This is what happened to that wizard and he turned into something else. Oh, God. The one that exploded. He has marks in his eyes. He's going to you know explode? What? I'm, what? I'm, I'm going to explode? No, no, Lassie. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's not like a dog. That, <laughs> that like is a, a famous dog, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lassie. Oh, secretary. Ew, hold on. <laughs> Maven's going to, whoa. <laughs> whoa, girl. Maven's going to give this guy kind of a wide berth around him and just kind of signal his group to be like, watch him. And he's going to go and just peek into the other room. He kind of follows you and looks back and forth between you, Maven, and the rest of the group. As you peek into the room, you can see at the end of the room where the goblins were building a small stage, you can see that there are a few goblins in that area still hammering away, but the whole entire market is cleared out, as well as the throne Yek was on, and all the bugbears are gone. There's only a few goblins still by the stage. Okay, well, here's the bad news. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know if there is a way, but nothing good's going to come from this. What is it? Just be straight. You might explode. <laughs> he uh, kind of looks at you, just not really believing you, but also 
not knowing what else to believe. So it's been a while for me out of game. So you they turn into something else, right? So you, Maven, uh, have encountered these in the past with your previous group, with Korvac, with Click, with Valith, and you found people who had markings underneath their eyes where eventually you learned creatures had burrowed inside of their bodies, taken over their brains, and transformed them somehow into these illithid-like creatures that you've come to be somewhat squid familiar man. with. The squid men. I yeah, wish Korvac, Korvac was here. He killed this guy already. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, he's going to go up to Tallgraf's ear again and just say, he's going to turn into something else. You got to you gotta end it right here now. I can do it for you if you don't want to. Why don't we do it together? Raven will shrug and like to agree with him. I guess we'll kind of... Uh... Boondock sing to assassinate him. So you guys go up to essentially coup de gras him yeah. yep. and put him out of his misery. As you guys pull your weapons and look at him, uh, if each of you, both of you, could make a perception check for me. 26. 11. Uh, Maven, you watch a flash of purplish energy go through his eyes before he... Whoa, wait, the silver flame. You, The silver flame, we're, we're brothers. Uh, Griff, my name's Griff. I, I, I come from the silver cl flame clan. I'm... It's all coming back. I'm, I still swing through me. with my weapon. Okay. Oh. Uh, Talgroff hesitates. Okay. Make an attack roll. Uh, just roll damage. Max damage. Max and just for flair, because I have it, I'm going to knock him back 10 feet into the wall. You cut across his chest, and he flings back into the wall. And as you swing this sword, Maven, it's well-balanced, but it still has a good heft to it when you swing it, and it feels really good paired with this shield. It's like they offset each other as you're swinging. But you swing, smash him into the wall behind Tallgroff with your slight hesitation as you see this. Your swing, you stop mid-swing, and he's pushed backwards into the wall. And he's pretty defenseless. Do you guys continue? If they do this, they're watching through him. They're trying to deceive you. Please, Tallgroff, I, I, I grew up there. We, we know the same people. I, I came here searching for a shield. You're telling me that you are here as well? To look for the shield. Is that why you're here? We're, we can search for it together. Please. Talgraf, you do it or I'm doing it. Talgraf will just sort of turn slightly to the side and say, nobody else knows about oh, shit. my quest. Please, the, the shield. He, he looks at all of you and you watch as he, his expression kind of changes. He was caught in the lie. As his mind is, you can tell he's completely controlled by whatever creature has control over it. I'm going to slam my my rod on the ground, the crystal side down, and have that same kind of electrical shock go through all the way up to him and cast shatter on him. Okay. Uh, yeah, just roll damage. <laughs> He'll save, but it doesn't, I don't think it matters right now. 14 points of thunder Yeah, even damage. if he made the save. Uh, you watch as your shatter strikes into his feet and his flesh begins to like rip off of his bones, but not before, Maven, you hear a familiar burrowing sound. As from the side of his head, you watch as his skull breaks open and a small brain-like creature with four legs comes out of the side of his head and we're gonna roll initiative. Oh! All right. Tallgroff, you are by far the most invested character in this if you would like to roll your initiative check. And remember, it's just a straight die roll. 13. So it's going to be the Intellect Devourer's turn first. Tallgroff, I need you to succeed on an intelligence saving throw. 14. Uh, you still take eight points of psychic damage. Ugh. As you feel something in your mind just pulling, and for a few moments you forget how to speak, you forget how to think, you forget everything that you know before you're able to shake off this, whatever it is that's going on. The intellect devourer is going to try and run away. Uh, Tallgroff and Maven, you can make op attacks if you'd like, because you're right yeah, next definitely. to Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. And it's gonna take off in the direction of the throne room. All right, op attack. Yeah. These things are tiny, right? Not that great. Oh, uh, yeah. They're super small. It's the size of a brain. 22 to hit. 16? Definitely hits. All right. I'm going to Divine Smite then. Okay. What level? Uh, first level. Okay. Maven, damage. I did 11, and again, I'm going to just slam him back into the wall. Okay. How much damage, Talgroff? 12 damage. 
Um, between both of you guys, Maven, you swing with your sword uh, right as Tallgroff. You bring down your axe and the silvery mercury that most of your magic attacks create expands through this creature's brain before the four legs just blow off and just splatter on the ground. Tallgroff will kind of, still holding his axe in this brain goop, sort of pant, like... <sighs> I can't believe what these things are doing. My own clan. <sighs> Tallgraph, you, you doing okay? Do you want to shoot the ballista a couple times? It's pretty fun. <laughs> you can hear a faint echoing. <laughs> Is the ballista still going off? Does someone want to explain something to me? Yeah. Um, so what when I was... <clears throat> <laughs> Does someone else want to explain to me what's going on? Look, there's these creatures. They have these worms that can get into your brain and... They do this. Don't you see? Not only that, it's... They're somehow... They're very unified. That thing just saw us. So all of them know that now. I heard it ask something about the shield too, so it knows Talgraf's quest. And something's watching my book, and, you know, you said before something knew where you were going, Maven, so something's watching all of us. Did we bring up the shield when we were talking to that drow at the top? Talgrass has been saying it every ten minutes since we got down here. Someone heard us. That's, that's fair. And what about the, the manticore with all the eyes on it? That too. And, uh... You have been talking about it a lot. I mean, that's fair. Did you say manticore with all the eyes on it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you listen to the episode I posted this one? <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> so I don't know what their ultimate goal is, but that is how I we formed our first group and how I started on this quest. We were going to see a ship that flew, and it crashed on a beach. We kind of messed with it, finally got through a door, and it disappeared. Hmm. So what you're telling me is that a lot's changed in a hundred years. Because last I remember, boats don't fly. I've never seen one fly. That's what either. I said. The manticles don't have multiple sets of eyes. And that one was pretty weird. Brains don't come exploding out of people's heads and Especially they start not walking people around. Your own clan. Well, let this be a lesson. If you guys see anyone, and I'll kind of describe the marks on their eyes. If you see anyone with marks like that on their eyes, they are infected. And without hesitation, you need to take care of the problem. You hear from the room behind you, you hear... Meh, meh, meh. You hear the sound of Ook struggling. It sounds like your friend's woken up. Yeah, I have a lot of questions for him. Maybe I can take out my frustration on him. Yeah, well, I mean, we have healing. You can take it out on him quite a bit. That's a good point. Oi! <laughs> Goblin fella! <laughs> you hear him struggling harder trying to get free of the ropes in the other room. I'll grab him and haul him up and pin him against <laughs> yeah. the wall. You run the room, you see him rolling around on the floor, like kind of covered in some goblin gore that he's trying to get away from now. You pick him up, slam him up against some of the cabinets in the kitchen. Now listen to me! Okay! There's a room! Right in front of us here. There's a lot of rooms in here! It's got a big I'm supposed to listen! There's a big door! It's got lots of dwarven stuffs on it, and then there's a lot of skeletons on the other side. You know anything about that room? Is there something in there that's going to kill us? Mm, I know about as much of it as I did the last time I met all of you. So you wouldn't mind if we just threw you in there without untying you? I'd appreciate to be untied first, but uh, do what you must. <laughs> Maybe he's not very helpful. This guy doesn't seem like he knows much at all. Yeah, he, yeah. You stole from one of my friends. Yeah, I didn't steal. I just look at him and I'll thaumatur just some lightning in my eye. <laughs> uh, make an intimidation check. 19. Before you do the thaumatur, he looks at you and, My impenetrable defense is... Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I stole I still... I don't have it on me anymore, okay? I'm sorry. What'd you do with it? Well, we have to make a living, right? Where do you take it? Well, I take it to Scoport, to Triller. No freaking way. What? <laughs> buy the silver flame. What did you buy from him? I didn't buy anything. So you just give it to Triller? Yeah, kind of. It's like a deal, you know? You get uh, a few perks here and there. Thinking about this right now, Maven will turn to the group and be like, what the hell does he do with all that money down here? Like, what, is he, what does he do with it? I don't know. Are you talking about Triller Maybe or this guy? It. Triller. 
Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever seen him have a, a, a shield with him or, or a sword? Or Ew. A trailer. A really trailer? nice one. Uh, well, which one? <laughs> what? You know what? Never mind. Okay. All right, tell me why I shouldn't kill you right here and right now. Well, I've been proven to be a useful ally. When did you do that? Yeah, I led you through the tunnels, didn't I? I was no, a guide. No, you did it. I was a guide. I'm going to slap him, too. Ow, you guys got to stop that. <laughs> I've been nothing but helpful, and all you did was kill my brother. I'm going to be honest. I just want to keep him alive, and I want to find something to just toss him into, like an acid pool or you know, like I a dragon's should, mouth. I, I actually should thank you for killing my brother. Now I only have 11 competition mates in my my house for food, for <laughs> breakfast, for dinner. One next person. Oh, I have an idea, guys. What if we load him into the ballista? Ooh, like a goblin hucker. Wait, but before that, ballista? I've read before about that. goblin huckers. Is there any way that uh, Triller takes anything other than gold for his items? Well, which Triller? You're saying there's more than one? There's lots of them. Oh, by the silver. Well, flying. that's good information, actually. That's, I'll give you that one. I have an idea for what we could do with the goblin. If we're going into the room with the dragon skeleton things, we can like push him into one, or maybe like put him on the wall and see what the tentacles do. You should totally I do that. I grab his throat with my with my prosthetic arm and just <laughs> hold it so he can. He, <laughs> what, what were you doing in this room before I stepped on you? He looks at you. I <laughs> got. What were you doing? <laughs> I, lo I, loosen <laughs> I loosen the grip up a little bit after a second. Um, well, I was doing magic. Explosions, fire. <laughs> Do you have more magic on you? I'm going to go through his pockets. <laughs> you rifle through his pockets? He has absolutely nothing on him. No magic. Well, you, can you see magic? Well, well, except for when it's being used. It's not being used right now. Do magic. I have an apprentice, you know. What's his name? Well, he doesn't have a name. He's made of stone. I like this guy. Let's see how he meets tentacles. Yeah, thank you too. Oh, this isn't helpful at all. I say we just charge into the room with all the skeletons and see what the hell tries to kill us. <laughs> Who cares at this point? I mean, I gotta say that was my plan too. I think that's a good idea. All right, let's go. Okay. All right, do we kill this guy now? Or no, we'll, we'll keep him. It seems like we've got a bit of a shield. All right, oh, you know what? This would be a good Sorry. time. Here's a lesson for your first adventure on how to deal with a hostage. You're in charge of him, Orion. If he runs, guess what you're gonna do? Kill him. Yep. Good job. So it seems like you're coming with us. Before before we go, uh, walking along with Ook then, I'll go, hey, put these on. And I'll give him the rubber boots I have. Well, they don't really fit. Put them on. He puts them on. They look like <laughs> clown shoes. And as he's kind of like trying to walk now, they're like flopping <laughs> on and off. Okay, good one, around. Right. I'm doing a good job. Well, I got to say, I kind of like them. Right, take them <laughs> off of him. He lost his privileges. <laughs> oh, we're also taking the ballista. We're wheeling it into the room, too. Sure. As you're wheeling the ballista forward, <laughs> shoots off and strikes the first dragon skeleton that then clatters from the ceiling into pieces on the ground as you break the ropes and the pressure from that, just the whole skeleton clatters to the ground can i inspect one of the bones that falls yeah you guys head in the room uh how are you having Euclid? is he on like a rope is he tied to a rope is he just waddling up ahead what do you want to do yeah let's rope a dope him rope yeah. a dopa he's tied in a rope all yeah. right all right so it's like a long leash you guys continue forward and stepping into the room you don't notice anything different about this room. As you do step in, the tentacles on the wall, you can tell they are slightly see-through, most of them. And the large skeleton that's now clattered to the floor. Uh, Ryan, you wanted to inspect some of the bones? Yeah, I want to see if it looks like real dragon bones. Yeah, make a uh, nature check? Sure, yeah. I've, I've read a lot of books. <laughs> Two. This looks like the most real... These are all real dragons. If there is like... A piece of bone or a splintered off piece of bone that is like dagger size or like hand size, I'll take some bone bits, but I'm sure I can't fit a huge You can take like bone. pieces of like the spine. Yeah. A few yeah. like vertebrae yeah, of a I'll dragon. I'll take some sure. dragon bones. Uh, is anyone here proficient in history or nature? I'm proficient in history. Looking over those, these bones with a more practiced eye, they are, in fact, completely real dragon bones. <laughs> Score. <laughs> How quaint. Hey, Ook, tell me what that tentacle tastes like. Yeah, okay. He walks over towards the tentacle, and he watches the tentacle on the wall, kind of like slaps him in the face, and you hear some like... <laughs> <laughs> sounds as it kind of hits him. And, hey, it kind of tickles, you guys. You should try it. 
kind of like walks her along the wall and it's like rubbing his back on some of the tentacles. That Does are it taste out. good? N nope. Taste like a rock. Then I'll pass. Why is this here? I don't know, but honestly, it's making me feel better. It's making me feel worse. Imagine running into the people that killed five dragons and put them on display here. That's got to be bad, right? Who says they weren't already dead? They don't live forever. That's true. Good point. There is such things as museums, too. I've never been in one, no. I mean, you basically have right now. Cool. <laughs> uh, and you can see at the end of this long, <laughs> quote-unquote, museum of dragons, <laughs> you can see that there's a staircase leading up and out of this room. You imagine it will be pretty difficult to get the ballista up a flight of stairs. <laughs> Maybe slightly impractical. Oh, we're taking this thing to the end. <laughs> you said that uh, this room was like covered in layers of dust. Yeah, it just looks like nobody's been here for a long time. Can I just do a quick once over as we're walking through the room to see if there's anywhere where the dust has been disturbed? Sure. Footprints um, or swipes markings what are, or something? Because the gods here keep forgetting you can't see what is your light source, Orion? <laughs> One of these times I'll actually remember. Ook, you have an important job now. You are my torch bearer. Oh, okay. Hold this, Strap and I light a back. torch, and I tell him to hold the torch. This can't go out. He kind of a little bit has a grasp of it between his tied up hands, and all right, no problem. All right, follow me. I'm looking for clues. Yeah. Okay, so I'm following. I'll look too. Make a investigation check with disadvantage with Maven helping. It would be a straight roll. Another two. <laughs> Another two. As you're looking around, all of you now, this entire room after the first dragon fell to the ground, all the dust in this room just blew out like a dust wave across everything, disturbing everything inside of this room, wiping away any tracks that would have been there. Yep. So stairs. Stairs. Stick close to me, Ook. I can't see without it. Yeah, not a problem. You want me to lead? Just for funsies, because I can I'm going to jump over there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you jump over next I'd to be, him. If I had those in real life, I'd do that all the time. Hell yeah. You jump over next to Ook and he, ah, I have bad memories of that. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you can still see like a boot imprint on his face. <laughs> okay. So you guys continue up the staircase. A few minutes go by as this staircase is incredibly long, unnaturally long for some reason. You imagine you've probably gone up 500 feet in elevation at this point. Ook's continuing walking forwards, and Maven, you were behind Ook? I'm in front. You're all the way in front. Okay. Yeah. So you continue going up the stairs, and you step on one portion of the staircase, and the whole staircase across, three steps go chunk, chunk down into the ground. Immediately in front of you, you watch as the ceiling, two flaps bust open, and a large boulder falls down onto the staircase and starts tumbling down in all of your directions. I cast Shatter on the boulder. We're going to roll to see if you can get something off first. Cool. So, dex checks. 18. Oh, not bad. Nine. 21. Nice. Nice. 16. Okay, so Orion, you get your Shatter off. So, Orion... And Gideon, you can each take an action before this boulder makes its way to you guys. Did I pass two? Rolled higher than Kyle. What'd you roll? 18. Oh, okay, yeah. So the three of you each can take an action. And uh, Talgroff, unfortunately, you were too slow. So I will deal, or I'll, I'll tell you the damage. But also, it makes a saving throw at disadvantage since it's made of inorganic material. Yeah, but, but it needs to make a con save the rock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it fails. It's a rock. Like, it's why not am a I boulder. Rolling? Why am I rolling? It's a rock. 11 thunder damage to the rock as I'm trying to break it to pieces before it rolls us over. Okay. Yeah, you strike out with this shatter spell, and you watch as a few small cracks form across the rock, but it seems like overall it's still well intact. Help. Ook, do something. Um, so Gideon and Maven. Is it uh, taking up the whole hallway? Uh, yeah, there's like small cracks on the side where since it is a round object coming down this square hole, there's like the small slants on either side where you could probably like duck and get underneath. You could try. That or this staircase seems to be designed to pigeonhole you into <laughs> yeah. getting hit by a giant boulder. <laughs> I'm going to follow suit actually and um, with the same spot or as close to one of the cracks that he did, I'm going to try to cast shatter in the same spot and kind of... Okay. Roll uh, damage, since it's just going to auto-fail. 14. 
Okay, you watch the crack continue to spread, but it's still up, Maven. How much did it take out of it? Uh, I, I mean, you can see that this boulder, it's starting to crack and form around it, but it, it looks like, you know, it, it's hit or miss right now. Maybe we'll follow suit too and do a shatter and he'll do max out the damage. Okay, so for how much? 24. Come on. Now it has one HP left. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Damn it, Orion. I told Ook to do something. Did Ook do anything? Uh... Did he, did he deal the you one said damage that. to let it? Me, uh, I did tell him to. Let me... He throws a rock at it and then... It <laughs> make, a, make a persuasion check. That's my jam. One. Um, <laughs> persuasion. No, it's going to be good. Uh, is 18. Okay. So <laughs> you watch as Ook, as you say that, he... Ah! And he holds up his torch and as it pokes the boulder, the boulder... <laughs> Yes. Open it. Yes. <laughs> and it shatters across the floor. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> Perfect. It I Luke love it. Saves wow. the day again. Wow, you got you just avoided so much damage. Good job, buddy. As Ook's now just standing, holding up the torch with his eyes closed. <laughs> he uh he, he looks around at the boulders. I did it. Yeah, I'm a it. hero! <laughs> Just like in your book, Orion. Uh-oh. Wait, wait a minute, bro. We'll call the session. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> My face was frozen. Oh, man. That concludes this week's episode down in the Dungeon of the Wacky Wizard. We want to give a big thanks to everyone who has taken the time to listen and share us with their friends as we just hit our first major milestone, 1,000 downloads. So keep doing what you guys are doing, and don't forget to like, share, rate, review, or subscribe on your preferred platform. Next episode is coming out May 26th on the Lazy Barkcast. It's okay, Mom. He's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lassie. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I just, I just had to.